so so everyone i hope you're staying safe staying well love that jazz and welcome back to my channel um this video is kind of a tutorial i don't really know but um it's also one of my first videos where i'm live recording stuff mainly due to the fact that um i haven't really been able to re live record stuff due to family and stuff like that so i'm just gonna give it a try now if it doesn't work out then so be it but you know i want to give it a try so today i'm doing a kind of hair tutorial because i've recently learned how to make hairs and i thought that um many people may want to know what um goes on when you're creating a hair and the last video that was the himigyaru pack i did do two hairs but these hairs it was like speed meshing and maybe you probably wouldn't have understood what i was doing so i want to try and create a hair and you guys can see the process and i'll also try and talk you through it um hopefully this video won't be too long but it probably will because it's a hair meshing video but anyways we're gonna try and just get into it so the main programs you need i I think it's only Blender. I use 2.79. into it i guess <laughs> so i'm creating a certain hair from pinterest i'll put up on the screen so i'm going to select create 3d mesh and that's for like to um uh, <laughs> sorry i can't even speak <laughs> to get the mesh from ea I, I just want to get the fringe of the hair so depending on what you're making um you may need to use ea parts to um for like certain parts of the mesh so the ea part i'm using is a fringe and i've actually used this fringe on the hime yaru hair so um you'll you'll see when i scroll um it's gonna take a while god Ooh. So I'm just scrolling down until oh here's the hair. Yeah. I think that's it. So I actually have a reference on Pinterest on my phone. I really should have downloaded this image. Give me a second to download the image because I really did not think this through. Okay, so now I've gotten the hair. Um I will shortly um do the thing but first of all we're gonna not skip i i always end up skipping stuff so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna i think i should probably no i might edit the texture map later so let's just do the one <laughs> so i'm gonna label this hair not in my downloads but we're gonna do we're gonna do test hair um hello okay there <laughs> um so it's loading and hurry please ah. excuse me okay there we go perfect so as you can see the hair is all like this all pretty and cute what we're gonna do is export the mesh so exporting the mesh um, we'll get it as a, a a blend file which you can then import into blender 2.79 um also speaking about the blender version i highly recommend 2.79 because in 2.79 you can use it to um do weight paints vertex paints like weight weight yeah weight transfer all that stuff uv1 and you don't have to switch between 2.76 2.79 2.79. Um, like, a lot of tutorials recommend doing that, but I don't really recommend doing that because I just do 
everything in one place and it's worked out for me so if it's worked out for me it should probably work out for you just as a heads up to anyone who is slightly confused about tutorials and stuff but that's just how i usually do it i usually just use blender 2.79 to do stuff but anyway my computer's old it's like 12 years old so excuse me um if it's acting up or being really slow in this video but um yeah i, I probably will sp oh okay never mind it did the thing perfect so now we're gonna what we're gonna do is file open uh hair test well i named it hair test but open whatever you named it to and here uh we can see it we can see we can see the hair um i can t i i don't know if this is for beginners i i guess it kind of requires some prior blender knowledge but um i don't have i can't enable i don't know how to enable the hotkeys um for blender so the hotkey i'm using right now is the scroll button i'm pressing down on the scroll button and that's allowing me to move like this to zoom in i move the scroll but oh that's okay <laughs> that's my boobies um <laughs> to zoom in i'm like scrolling in like this and scrolling out to move i press shift and then i press the scroll button and that's to move like this um if i've missed anything i'll probably address it later but that's all i need so right now we, we have to find these are all hat chops so for hair if you don't know they have this thing called hat chops where when a hat is applied to the hair the hair like gets chopped like this or this so <laughs> kind of looks funny but we don't need um we don't need this so we're gonna f we have to find the mesh that's completely you know full and use that we're going to delete the rest that's not necessary and yeah we can start working on it so what i'm gonna do is i want to isolate the fringe an easy way to do this is um i'm using a to select all um at all oh, sorry before we do this make sure to go to the uv scroll enable this thing trust me then we can see what parts are selected it's really useful anyways going back to this i'm gonna use l to select all of the fringe boop 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 i think that's all of it and then we're gonna press p selection then we are going to find yep yeah, this is the this is the separated mesh so we're gonna delete the rest because we don't need it and to delete i used right click and then press delete and then i have the isolated hair how wonderful how how amazing how beautiful well it's just the fringe but yeah i'm gonna just delete these stray vertices i don't really understand why it's like this um but yeah if you get stray vertices um actually you could do mesh there's this thing where you can do where you if you press a select all of it all of your mesh um mesh clean up delete loose oh it didn't delete any loose okay that was useless but it's good for um if you have random strands of hair just laying about um yeah yeah sorry uh gonna delete the vertices why can't i delete this vertice there we go so yeah we have the thing so before i get started properly we are going to import the um the image as a plane so i can use it as a reference so to do this there's actually a blender add-on that you need um i think it's a blender add-on um so let me see the ones that i've yeah so it's called 
Blender add-on import export images planes. So what you want to do is you can either search for it up here or you can um, just choose to uh, tick it and then after you do that you save user settings, close it and you'll have this. So what you want to do is go to mesh, go to images as planes, um, open the image. What did I save it as? Um, <laughs> I'm so bad at naming things. What's oh hair hair, good. So there we have it. We have the hair. And what we're gonna do is R. I think it's R Z twenty. Yeah. If you don't know, um, R is to rotate. And S to, is to scale. But, um, if you wanna do what I just did, um, it's R twenty. I'm oh, sorry, RZ and then 90. Um, also, I don't know if there's too much information. So <laughs> I'm just kind of like giving you guys information all at once. But um, there's the X, there's the X, Y and Z axis. So there's, so I've just told you about the rotation and about the scale. So you can, what you can do is actually combine X, Y and Z to do different things to an image or mesh or object or whatever so if you want to do ry it um rotates it on the y scale so it rotates it like like this if you want to do rz it rotates it on the z axis so it goes like this and if you want to do r um, what's the last one x sorry <laughs> it rotates it like this kind of up and down so just keep that in mind so yeah, now we're finally going to get started on the hair. So, just... I love this person, they just look menacing behind my sim. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, why is the thing kind of... Uh, okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, we are now going to... Eh, okay. I am now going to attempt to create this hair cool coolio um i don't know if i'm gonna make a custom fringe but we'll see we'll see how it goes okay finally to start the, the actual free tutorial we are going to um create meshes from curves um i think curves but um comes pre-installed in blender so i don't think you have to do a thing anything but what we're gonna do is import curve path and I usually press S to scale down. Um, turn it with using my scroll button, pressing down, moving it here, doing that boop, boopy thing, boopy thing. What am I even talking about? I don't even know. <laughs> but <laughs> this is our path. So we're going to manipulate this line once we get a circle to do our bidding and just wrap around however we want. So this is the thing that is going to be controlled by the circle if this makes no sense don't worry it probably will afterwards if it doesn't i'm so sorry <laughs> but we're gonna add this thing called a circle and we're gonna do the circle is i usually just make it small using s i use r z 90 90 oops i did that wrong sorry let's try again r z 90 um what's coming on does it not apply to this? I don't remember. Rx90? Oh, it's X. Okay, four circles to rotate it like this is for is X, not Z. So we're gonna use these little um this this pivot thing as well to move it. So it's kind of close. Now what we gonna what we <laughs> what we are going to do is use the circle to influence the path. We're gonna go here, this little icon here, nubs path. First thing we're gonna do, put this to like two or something. And also for the circle, put this to like two or three. It's like two or three, um, stuff like that. Because if you don't, your polygons are gonna be huge and it's not gonna look good. Cause when you import it into Sims 4 Studio, it's gonna be like so high poly and you will cry and regret everything so just please please do this i'm begging please please set your resolutions please 
Then we're going to go to bevel object, bezier circle. Did you guys see that? Did you see that? We are, we are controlling this thing. And you can actually see it if you press S to scale the circle and scale it down. Um, you can actually see that it goes all wee wee wee. So that's what we're going to use. Um, you can press edit mode to edit the points of the circle and this actually influences um, the curve. So I did see a tutorial of curves but I forgot how the person did the circle but um, we're just gonna kind of wing it. You can copy what I do if you want or just like play with it to see how you like it but let me put it in solid mode so i can actually see what's going on i don't know I, nothing's really changed that much so i'm just gonna leave it so yeah i okay now we're gonna actually finally manipulate the path so what we're gonna do and move the path back i'm just gonna scale it down a little bit i'm gonna use r just R, turning it, um, kind of putting it here. Okay, usually, okay, from now on, I usually like um, working in solid mode, which is this, because it allows me to see everything that's going on, and the texture's kind of annoying. So, um, this is, I, I just did the images planes, if you want to like put the texture in blender but i prefer working in solid obviously it makes the image disappear so i'm actually going to use my phone which i'm recording on right now <laughs> as a um uh way to see the image so if you hear any weird noises that's me doing a little boopy thing on my phone um okay now we are on my phone i'm gonna move this here first thing i'm gonna do is try and like be like the image and move it just you just move it you just use your you just use your right mouse button move it boom move it like that i'm gonna um move it a little bit closer to here and i want it to kind of come out of the oh i think my phone keeps turning off it's still recording my voice but oh my god please stop turning off might need to change the settings one second um display can't even spell display <laughs> um auto lock please stop stop i can't how do i <laughs> you know what? i'm not going to stress myself out i'm just going to remind myself to keep turning off turning on my phone so we can actually control, did you see what I did there? We can actually control by pulling this. Do you see it goes all wee? We can actually control it by doing this. So um, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to ask me in the comments. Oh, at this timestamp, what did you do here? Or at this timestamp, what did you do here? But basically we're just moving the, pivot, the point to manipulate it exactly how we like. Um, so for um, paths you can actually press alt s yes alt s to scale the paths because normal scale doesn't work this is me pressing s so you have to press alt s scale it down and i'm scaling it down because in the original image it has the hair strand goes smaller so we want it to go smaller also to add more points to the hair strand because you're thinking this is very you know small you want to press shift oops no so you want to press control <laughs> control and hit your left mouse button so control left just click any point and boom you get you get another strand awesome right so <laughs> if you want any more strands just just do this i hope um this makes sense i keep i keep saying that but i really hope it 
does because I intended to make this tutorial for the sake of if people want to learn meshes or how to create their meshes from scratch then it, it's a good way this is a good way or at least the way that's worked for me this is looking rather ugly so we're gonna just kind of experiment with it anyway this part i might i might just speed mesh because it's taking so long well i just started but i feel like it's gonna take long but i don't know actually okay fine let me stop complaining and see <laughs> what actually how it actually turns out but yeah it's not looking too bad what i do once i've sculpted to the path is that i press ctrl c ctrl v in object mode and it creates a new path i press the new path use edit mode and edit it exactly how i want it to be edited so boom um the hair kind of goes like this uh, uh, i think it gets a bit thicker at the ends so we're gonna like do this do this i'm gonna give some variation to the hair strand as well I'm gonna go into five i'm gonna press five and that's like ortho mode so i can actually see it without any perspective which is really useful if you want to see how it's looking so i mean it the fringe kind of looks weird but again i might change it i might change it i don't know so we're just gonna see um i'm having a really hard time with this <laughs> the heck Okay, I think I think that's enough. I think that's enough. I think not bad. Not bad. Not bad guys. Not bad. <laughs> so um because this is the same on each side, I'm gonna press I'm gonna select both. So I'm gonna press left mouse button, shift, press this one. I'm gonna control C, control V. Also, th this introduced new bezier circles just so that each um, strand has its bevel object, which makes sense. So to mirror this, to mirror these two strands, I'm going to press Control A, um, Rotation. I'm going to just take all of these. I'm going to press S, then I'm going to press X, minus 1, yes. Um, and this makes it so it mirrors it. How wonderful, y'all, isn't it? How, how wonderful is this? How, how glorious. So we can actually edit and mirror stuff. That's, that's quite cool, isn't it? I want to actually um, use sculpt mode. I'm going to use grab to kind of push this down. Would that even work? I don't know. Um, don't know. It kind of makes it look. All, oh, can this? Okay, I'm not really using this image anymore. Um, so we're just gonna get rid of it. Well, we're gonna just hide it so I don't have to see it. I don't know, I'm gonna just leave the, the fringe alone. Maybe if I decide I don't like it, I'll just change it, but yeah. So to create the braid, I believe there's this cool add-on to Blender that has this kind of, um, it's like add extra objects. Yeah, it's this one, so if you just tick it and save user settings it should be fine but it's to add extra objects so i believe it's curve i might just speed mesh this part since i have already uh told you 
guys about um I guess kind of the inner workings. So I may speed mesh the rest. Uh, sorry, I can't speak. Speed mesh the rest of this part, and um, yeah. Um, <laughs> if I missed anything in this little explanation, I'll probably just um, let's just skip to the speed meshing.
Hello everyone, so I've finished the hair for not what I think and I would say it looks pretty decent. If you've gotten up to this point in the tutorial, um just just be really proud of yourself because creating hair is such a struggle and it it's just actually a pain. So the fact that you guys are like even just doing this that that's an achievement in itself and you should be proud um of course this there's bits here that aren't the best i might fix them later but i've tried to fix them and i can't so uh <laughs> i don't really know what to do but you know i'm just gonna go and wing it we'll see what happens honestly because I, I don't I actually don't know what to do with these hairs but um with these this part the hair but i'm proud of the that dabbling bit that's quite fun it's cool um and little things so obviously i'm assuming that you like me also used a reference photo because um it's always good to have references when you're creating hair and if you don't have a reference it's gonna be really hard to actually know what you want so yeah one last thing before I actually get back into tutorials that I've actually finally enabled this <laughs> this thing called screencast which will allow you to well, well, sorry which will allow you to see what keys I press um as you can see just press the middle mouse there so hopefully it'll make the tutorial way easier but I was trying to do it at the start of the tutorial but I really couldn't it, it wasn't installing so I was like you know what let's just go ahead and luckily I made it work, so you'll be seeing this little thing in the corner from now on. But hopefully it doesn't distract you too much. It's just so that people know what I'm clicking. Um, and hopefully it'll make it easier for you. So, as you can see, I have all these Bezier circles all the way down here. I have like a hundred of them, it's really bad. What I want to... <clears throat> ah! <coughs> <clears throat> having a moment that's so sorry um what i want to do is as you can see there's these i've actually converted these into a mesh i will obviously show you how to do that in a minute but what we want to do is convert the remainder of the mesh which is has the little symbol the nerve symbol into a mesh so what we're going to do is click all of them so we're going to um, left mouse, shift, 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 shift click, shift, just like click all of it. Or if if you um, I'm assuming if you're may if you're um sorry I can't even speak <laughs> sorry if you're doing this tutorial tu blah, sorry tutorial, all of your hair is probably um. Uh, has this symbol, so you'd probably just want to do this and then do the thing but i'm just manually clicking it because it's easier um e oh ah no yeah i think that's it so to convert this from a curve to a mesh and actually make this workable is we wanna press alt c and press mesh from curve and boom you see it just turned into the, to the mesh symbol that's awesome so now what we're going to do is just um do this i'm going to be mindful of these things make sure you don't merge you don't accidentally like do that don't do that because it just just don't just don't include the bezier curve in it but now we're going to do Control j to join all the hair and as you can see as i've joined it some of the hair's gone a bit ooh. Uh it's basically turned itself like inside out for whatever reason. So don't panic. Go to edit oh gosh, oops. Go to edit mode. Sorry, this is just to um toggle the um hold uh the thing. But go into edit mode, press A, A twice, and press Ctrl N. And that should fix it boom it's done also as you can see i went into object mode and it was very glitchy and you'll probably get that depending on um 
how high poly your mesh is that's why i okay let me quickly sorry let me quickly convert these but that's why i recommended turning down the resolution really low because when you actually um decide to um convert it into a mesh then when you go go in edit mode it's going to be like so laggy and my computer is a potato so i'm trying not to break it or make photoshop photoshop no make uh <laughs> um blender not photoshop blender crash so yeah okay so now all the hair is here and now what we're gonna do we don't because we've converted all of these this is one hair as you can see i can click it on and off i used i end i ended up using this fringe as a guide i actually created my own fringe which i'm quite proud of actually so we're just gonna delete delete well delete this because i don't need it anymore and we're gonna delete the bezier curves because we don't need those anymore um to so delete um this delete so yeah as you see the tries are quite high um if you see all of it the tries are about like 60 which is not good but that's kind of what um that's kind of what hair which when you have so many strands like this um i should have made the quality slightly lower but i can also tell you guys how to um there's different ways to um to make this lower poly so one way is actually getting rid of the ed uh, sorry the edge loops and this is like all these lines down here you can just i just click on it randomly like this and then just really random and hope for the best so i do control e edge loops delete well the delete key on my keyboard and then delete edge loops and as you can see it's not bad it it hasn't like damaged it or anything and you can see the try count has gone low not gone low but gone down so i advise if your mesh turned out really high poly like mine um then just just do this thing i might speed this up because i don't want to make the tutorial too long so edge loops delete edge loop. ah no do not scale it <laughs> delete the edge loops um this is just a great way to make the mesh more efficient because while it does look nice with a lot of edge loops if you have too many it gets unnecessarily high poly and you really don't need an unnecessarily high poly mesh um, i shouldn't have deleted that one so try and deselect um so yeah i'm gonna speed up this part yeah also um yeah again be careful i've already said this but be careful of just like how um you how, how the resolution is that's why i told you guys to put really really well as low as you can so like two or three because if you put it too low the mesh will look awful but if you put it too high while the mesh will look amazing you will just get an unnecessarily high poly 
mesh that will do no good in your game because it will just destroy everything <laughs> or just make your game lag and no one wants that it's quite a tedious process but it's quite satisfying because you just see the poly count just start to go lower and when the poly count is low less stress um and yeah it's just it's definitely less stressful it'll definitely be less stressful for people who are um if you're planning to put this out as a download for people who are downloading your content because then you don't have to um do all like stating that it's like extremely high poly because some people's computers can't handle that so they may be deterred from of like upon hearing that the mesh is high poly which is fair enough because it high poly meshes are awful or at least in my game my 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 12 year old computer cannot handle them oh god no stop <laughs> my 12 year old computer cannot handle them and it literally just crashes the game and explodes everything so just you know if you have any extra patience do please do the edge loops i recommend it really useful um, as you can see the polys it used to be like 60 and now it's um 57 which is not the greatest still i'd rather not have a 50 seven polygon mesh because uh again computer is slow but it's better than having a 60k one obviously there is probably a way more efficient method but this is the method that works for me when i am creating meshes that have turned out a bit too high poly and i'm like oh gosh i didn't think that it was going to be that high poly As you can see, have you also noticed the improvement in the movement? Because even the movement in Blender, because even though um, it's still kind of laggy, did you notice that when I um, first like opened the not open but like first did the meshes? Did the mesh? What's the word for it? When I first like open the edit mode when i had joined all the meshes together it was quite laggy and now it's it's not bad so obviously shows an improvement in the polys and it shows that the poly count is lowered which is good so that's what we're aiming for we're aiming for the the blender edit mode to be as smooth as possible because that indicates that it needs to load less kind of just repeating the same things here um but yeah it's just it's just pretty important to know uh, oh not the edge rings <laughs> the edge loops see i i love i love that the mesh is still detailed while having quite a lower but not low poly but a lower poly um while being lower poly because it's nice and it's efficient and it means that people who um are downloading my content who also have horrible computers or laptops can download this safely that's all i want <laughs> if you have a like a high poly high poly no a computer that can run a lot of high poly stuff then you should be fine but it's always a good practice for creators to make their creator creations efficient for everyone because it's good to have that also it's always good to be cautious about um 
you know how when you're deleting the edge loops like how is your mesh looking because it's always important to make sure that um everything you're not making any significant removals like when you remove the edge loops you want um for example just deleting half of the thing because that's happened to me before and um yeah try not to select too many things because then it will just delete half of the thing obviously you can just control z that back but it's always good to be cautious Oh, never mind. I should have just... Yeah. Another thing is that you can press L to select a, a whole strand or anything. It's really useful. That's what I did. Just now, um, let's just go in a bit more before I call it quits. Just select a few more things. So as you can see, I've actually deleted 6k polygons. It used to be 60 and now it's um now it's 54. That's pretty good. See, that's the power of deleting ed edge loops. Pretty proud of that. Pretty proud. I can't say pretty anymore for some reason. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of bored of deleting edge loops now. So let me just quickly finish up before I go on to do the next. I need to sort this out. What's going on here? Also, just a reminder that this is not a professional tutorial. Um, this is just my experiences with creating hair so far. I've only created three hairs so far, at least that I've liked. Like, I've scrapped a lot of hair because I didn't like it. But... I've created three um, three hairstyles so far that I've released and I've liked it, so that's good. Um, and, you know, it's always good to be proud of your meshes. But, so I think I'm done now, honestly. <laughs> I might go back once. Like, you can, also, you can also just go back in the end and do this anytime. It's not something that you have to do at a certain point in the process. If you've made a custom fringe or just a custom custom hair strand and it's kind of like left out like this and you didn't do like OS or anything on it, it's always good to extrude. So you press E and S which will scale it inwards and that's what many CC creators and also EA does when they want to do meshes, they just do this. What they do afterwards is that they select it all over again. Oh, nope. They select it again. Uh, where is this strand going? This. They select it again and I think they press Ctrl E, edge split. So the edge split gets rid of that weird shadow that appears when you extrude stuff. So now I'm just going to extrude everything inwards so that it doesn't... Um, well, the reason why I do this is because when you go in game, sometimes if something isn't extruded, it let's say you go in game and you tilt the screen, it, look, it, it just shows through the mesh and it like breaks the immersion of the hair. So it's always good to extrude stuff when you can um i recommend extruding like people extrude all types of stuff they extrude dresses they extrude 
um, majority of clothes and accessories and just most things, objects as well. It's just so that it has like a base so it doesn't show the insides. Um, the only time you'd want to not extrude is that if maybe you're creating a dress or an object or something that you want to see um, like the inside so let's say you're creating a dress um, and you want people to see to uh, you want people to see the dress inside then and like so they can tilt the screen and like see the dress or whatever then you don't extrude but instead you flip normals but I don't think we ever do flipping normals in this tutorial, so I'm not gonna like really mention it that much. I don't think you guys will need it. So um if you if we do end up needing it, then I will mention it. But for now it's not really needed. If I ever get good at clothes and ooh, if I ever get good at clothes and um I make a tutorial um uh, oh what did i do make a tutorial about clothes then i'll probably be mentioning that but that's not needed i hope i'm not confusing you i'm just talking about a different thing <laughs> um so just extruding this oh make sure that then when you extrude it make sure it doesn't go inside out because that's not fun make sure you extrude it you can stop and just keep going then just click it again i swear there's a way to make it like easy is it edge loops yes edge loops okay i'll do that from now on yeah and then here finally e edge loops no does that not work edge rings no i can't have to manually do it There's probably a way more efficient way of doing this, but I'm just doing this um, because I actually can't think of another way. The way it'll probably just come back to me once I'm done and I'll be so annoyed at myself. So yeah, it looks, when I tilt up, it'll look like this. So while it doesn't look the best, um, obviously it looks just like a chunk of clay. That's just kind of how you do it to avoid um, it seeing inside of the hair, because obviously that's not how hair works in real life. Okay, so now I've. Th this is again or optional this is just only if you've um um if you've if you're in a similar situation with me when you needed to cover this up or it would have just looked weird but one thing i always recommend save save your stuff save save your hair i always just um i always name the hairs like hair test or like um hair try and then I do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Um, like every major part I've gone up to in the process, I've just edit edited the saved the file as something new. This step is probably now getting into texturing. But before we get into texturing, we want to focus um, in the data tab here. Focus on UV maps. So UV maps are basically all this 3D stuff represented into a 2D image. It's kind of like, you know, when you were younger, maybe at school, you would like make, um, you know, those things where you had to fold in the shape and create the shape 3D. You had like a, um, I forgot what it was called, but you had to, you had to like cut out the shape and fold it and stick it until it was like made into the shape i remember i vividly remember like making um a cube 
like a 3D cube with out of paper, so you had to like cut out the um um you have to like cut out the base of the cube and then fold it and stick it on different corners to make it into the cube. That's basically what a UV map is. Um, by the way, I was really bad at doing stuff like that, but hopefully I won't be bad at doing this. So we actually have to make the UV map like in accordance to the EA1. So the EA1 has two. It has UV0, which is the main texture. It's what you will see when you see hairs in The Sims 4, you will see the UV0. That's just the main one. And also we need UV1, which is how the mesh moves with the body sliders so explaining that it'll be like let's say in KS I wanted to move the head like I wanted to move it so like you know how the head gets wider if UV1 is done correctly the head should move with the body slider um, again a disclaimer not all hair needs a UV1 um, usually, I think really, really long hairs don't have a UV one, or just certain types of hair don't have a UV one. Um, for example, the recent hair I made that I post on my Tumblr, my Affy hair, it doesn't have a UV one because um, it it just didn't need it. Like certain hairs don't need to be deformed like that, and if you don't have a UV like if the UV one is um, if you either, if you don't really have one, it's not it's not that necessary. But if you're making a hair that's like this length, like shoulder length or short or like kind of long, but not like like this long, like not really really like down to the calves type of long, then I would say it's necessary. But again, depends what type of hair you're making. And if you're confused, I will link a tutorial below that explains UV1, UV0 in depth. But yeah, so we're gonna, if you type it out exactly like I'm doing, so it's UV0 um, with a underscore, with lower, lowercase and underscore. And then we're gonna add one, UV1. So yeah, these, it, it's just as simple as that, honestly. So that's all we need. I'm gonna quickly save it here. I usually save that. I already said this, but I usually save at every major major step of the process, which makes it way easier for me. So you should probably do that as well. So yeah, to get into texturing, um, yeah, but we're gonna let's let's get into texturing. So for texturing, you wanna go back to Sims 4 Studio. You wanna either um, you can use um, a hair, the hair that, um, no wait, sorry, <laughs> let me start again. You can use um, an EA mesh, so you can go into Sims 4 Studio, you can hit create 3D mesh, export the mesh or export the texture and then use a texture or you can use a creator's mesh um, which I'm gonna do just make sure that if you use a creator's mesh it's in accordance with their terms of use because you don't want to violate their terms of use that'd be really awful so don't do that please just make sure you read the terms of use um, or clarify anything with the creator of the texture you're going to use before you use the texture etc etc um, this is mainly only if you're going to release the hair. If it's for personal use, I don't think most creators mind, but if you want to um, create this and put it on a social media such as like Tumblr or Twitter or whatever, then make sure that if you um, use a creator's hair, hair mesh, not hair mesh, oh yeah, hair mesh or texture etc just credit them and stuff like that so i'm actually using um i don't know if i i, I don't know if i already said that i was going to use tech crease but i changed my mind i'm going to use another creators called qwerty sims and they create really nice hairs 
their hairs are really nice and I, well, I just said that <laughs> but um, I'm gonna use this texture map and it's according to their terms of use so just you know double check terms of use to make sure it's okay to get the texture into blender you could just export the texture but there's like a lot of steps to get it into the material and i just find it easier to export the mesh so i i, I exported the mesh i did this already off camera i exported the mesh and i say i typed it as reference then i saved it and once you do that you want to go back into blender you want to hit file and we're going to append it which means we're just going to bring it here we're going to bring the mesh here file append and you want to go to wherever you saved it i named it reference so it's here and um, then we're going to put object and you see these studio mesh one studio mesh two studio mesh three etc so hairs have only three studio meshes i believe so it's for the main mesh and the hat chops and the hat chops is basically um you have to not all the time depends on whether the hair is hat compatible or not but you have to basically chop the hair to make hats suitable for it so creators do this thing we're gonna append it creators do this thing where they um if they want to make a hair suitable to wear for hats they do this thing where they chop it off and so the hat can fit but it depends what hair you're making but for my hair i'm not doing hat chops so i probably won't be showing that in this video but i will be linking a hat chops tutorial um so it makes more sense so now we've imported our mesh you want to delete bone bone shape one so don't need that and then we're going to delete rig one and i'm gonna just make my mesh um i'm gonna actually name this my mesh so that it makes sense to me and i don't get confused um so i advise you to name it to whatever maybe like my mesh my thing i don't know something like that so we we, we want to find we want to like un untick uh but like unsee it and you want to focus on this mesh so as you can see you, you can see the hat chops so we we don't want the hat chops so we're gonna delete this one oh this one's the main one okay so this is another hat chop you can see it's diagonal so that's for like diagonal hats we don't need that so we're gonna delete that so this is the main mesh we need and i'm not actually gonna i'm not gonna be using this actual mesh um, i'm not gonna be using um the mesh itself i mean i'm gonna be using the texture so as you can see because we've appended it there's been an added texture here called diffuse map 001 um just check what it's called so you can open it in the uv editor here but mine's called diffuse map 001 and what you want to do is you want to go to you, you want to hide this because I, I was just confirming that I have diffuse map I want to go to my mesh open it open it and or un see it tick the eye you want to go over to uh, we want we want to go over to this little photo thing here um, we want to find whatever name that diffuse map was and open it. So as you can see, this is the diffuse map of the hair. And yeah, this is what the hair textures look like. It's quite, I don't know, I really like the highlights. I really like it. But yeah. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And yeah, what we're going to do is to get this mesh onto the map we're gonna go to materials tab we're gonna press new and we're gonna put our material to this diffuse map so it lost this shine so that shows that it's on the diffuse map before we get started with actually doing like texturing the hair on the diffuse map you want to just like 
make it like pin do this pin what's it called pin yeah i just call it pin because blender is really annoying it does this thing where every time you like um like going in and out of uv map like the uv editing it just unpins it so and like it just at least for me so it's really annoying so make sure to pin it and now um i don't know if we need, i'm just gonna keep it untipped but i don't know why we need this mesh I'm gonna go to object. I'm gonna go to edit mode. Sorry, and it's gonna take a while to load because my mesh is still kind of high poly. But I will talk about how to make it more lower poly at the end. But yeah, I'm gonna press B. Ah, let me quickly enable something. <laughs> um, screencast keys. Why is it not working? Ah, oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just... I, I don't know. I thought I already enabled screencast keys. But yeah. I'm going to press B. I'm going to select all of this. This is the entire hair mesh. And we're going to move it out of the way. <laughs> so I can actually see the texture map. And I'm going to make sure this is UV0. Just make sure that you're on UV0. UV1, the way uv one's done is completely different, so make sure you're not on UV1. No UV1, only UV0. And now, to texture the actual thing, how I do it, I don't know if this is the correct way, but how I do it at least is I go down here to faces, face select. I, um, I press L on a random strand let's try this one l and you see it selects the whole strand and i'm also because i did the edge split i'm gonna select the bottom using b and i'm gonna press u reset so as you see all of it is, re is reset but this brings the strand to the main mesh so i can actually look at it then to how I unwrap it because you have to unwrap the um, the 3D mesh to be 2D so unwrapping it is like as I said before about the making the geometry cube the 3D cube to unwrap it is basically just like how it was before you started assembling it before you started making like sticking and folding to make the cube so it's like if the cube was flat again so we're gonna make the texture flat so it can fit onto the map to do this we're gonna press i'm gonna press shift and i'm gonna press right yeah right mouse button and then press this we're gonna press like a random quad and a quad is four points so click you know click the right mouse click on a random random four points i'm gonna press u i'm gonna press follow active quads and don't mind this i just put length average okay as you can see this is unpacked this has unwrapped the mesh really nicely into like a very uniform and rectangle way so it's it's not like all weird and stuff so yeah because we've unpacked it no because we've um unwrapped it we want to fit it onto the map the mesh map also before i before i uh forget go on to either texture or my oh i hate that look ew it looks so disgusting but yeah go on to either um texture or material yeah material is basically the same thing as texture but yeah go on to these two so you can actually see what you're doing <laughs> please i nearly forgot go on to so um yeah you can actually just scale it down like manually but i prefer to do this thing called pack islands where it does it for you like this it packs it for you so it fills so yeah it transforms it to, to fill it for you so that's really useful so we're going to use these two features th these features to unwrap 
the hair. Now, I want to just press S, scale it. So S is for scaling. I think I already mentioned that earlier. But S is for scaling it down. And now we can move it onto the map. How fun. We can move it here. Yeah. As you can see, because I've, un I've unwrapped it, but it looks very weird, as you can see here. Like, I'm my mesh is here, and it doesn't look right. So what's happened is that the mesh needs to be rotated. So sometimes the mesh needs to be rotated so that it it aligns better. I don't know why, but yeah. So I usually rotate it 90 degrees one way. As you can see, it's actually showing the strand. So ooh, let me just push this back. So now to fit it onto the strand, there's these um, few commands you can use. You can use, um, I believe, S. SX so you can use SX to make it to like make it smaller and when you make it smaller less texture fits into the map so if you want more texture you do SX and scale it out but if you want less you do SX and scale it inwards there's also SY and you scale it it like makes um, it bigger and smaller so it fits more of the texture into it i usually just leave it its size depending on how much texture is in it and then there's also um i don't think there's z no z there's no z so it's only sx and sy so as you can see here i'm doing all that so you can kind of see what it looks like here it looks fine but i don't know, it kind of looks a bit off so you just have to kind of play around with it, like see what, I'm going to just like scale it. I want to see what works for me. And I might flip it so that the dark side is on, is here. I don't know, the, the mesh kind of looks a bit weird. Here, not the mesh, the texture, at least on this hair. You might have to move it around, play with how it looks. But yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe I should switch hair texture because this might not be the texture for me. And that's okay. Not not every texture is for the hair. But yeah, um, I'm going to just kind of play around with it and see what happens. Um, maybe I need to make it bigger. Is that why it's so blurry? I don't know. It could be. Yeah, as you can see at the bottom, well, for my edge split, I might have to like unwrap that by itself. Because it's its own shape. So I'm going to just unwrap that by itself. I'm going to put it somewhere like dark. Yeah. But I don't know how I feel about the mesh, but basically that that would be basically how you unwrap hair. So you you press L, you press you press shift, control click right mouse button on the random quad, you follow active quad, unwrap, then pack oh ooh, ah sorry, then pack the island. So that's kind of just the process. You just you just keep keep doing that for each strand. And honestly, I have a lot of strands to work with. So it's this is not something that 
um, uh, I would be talking all the way through for because I don't know I, I maybe I'll put a thing on the screen if anyone's still confused to show how I do it but yeah um, I might okay since this one's way better I might move this to over here maybe I don't know how I feel about the texture maybe I might change it I don't know but we'll, we'll see how I feel about it, you know, as I go on. But yeah, I think I'm gonna just like stop recording. Not stop recording, but like stop talking for a while. Maybe make a few comments as a texture. Or maybe I'll just speed speed paint it. But like, it looks so awful. Oh my god, guys. I can't. It's so nasty. Honestly. But yeah, I don't want to record all of the texturing, that's going to take ages, so, uh, yeah. I'm just going to stop, like, speaking here, and then I'll start, like, texturing stuff, yeah.
Hey, what's up everyone? It's Ellery. I am back. Um, just with another little update. What I've done is that I've sort of aligned the scalp line, hairline, I don't know what to call it. Because it was janky, it was a bit off, didn't look right. I've also added a few strands here to the hair. Just to give, to make the back look fuller. Because it wasn't looking right, honestly. <laughs> I've also done some sculpting tool, which is, you can access that through, if you click on here, then you click here. I've been using grab to like kind of fix these different parts of the hair because it's really useful. I guess one con of grab is that it like, um, it makes, you know the hair not exactly neat because when you're grabbing it it's not uniform it's not like perfect so again try and use grab sparingly i've used it a lot and it did make it this bit a little bit janky but it's better than having it misaligned so um you know what just, i'm just gonna I'm, I'm fine you know i'm fine with it so um oh yeah sorry i've also just added a few strands here to like kind of give fullness of the hair it's like a little bold bit here but you know what i don't know i don't think anyone's gonna tilt that much i'm trying to see and try and see so i think we should be fine i've also added this these two strands here they look very out of place and that's because i'm going to um their UV. Um, let me get rid of this. Their UV is, is this. Is um, this. And I'm going to try and make this the braid that's coming out of the person's head in the reference photo. Because this, this strand here, this one. Uh, let me select it. This strand was meant to be the braid. These two strands but it it is too big for a braid and it's part of the scalp so there's no way i can do that so i've just decided to make this one um part of the braid part, part of the braid part of, i've just made this one part of the head so we'll see what happens maybe i'll delete them if they don't look right but i'm just gonna add them in here because why not now we've done the texturing all that stuff the you know now let's actually get into rigging rigging this for the game so what we're going to do next is that we are going to um do vertex paint weight paint data transfer and also any other things that we need to correct before we import into studio and also um geom which is this i'll explain it later and yeah just we're gonna actually like get into the end stages of this so first we're gonna do um vertex paint because it's just easiest to do so vertex paint is basically um i advise you to put into solid mode so click here solid vertex paint is basically how does the mesh react um to body sliders and there's actually a lovely vertex paint tutorial by i think void feather sims um that kind of explains what vertex paint is and you know how to do it and stuff so yeah vertex paint is very important if you don't have vertex pa uh, sorry <laughs> if you don't have um vertex paint for your sims it's gonna probably not gonna work well and um especially for hair it's gonna turn out really weird in game so be careful and make sure you always do vertex paint so first the vertex paint for hair is um i believe it's 007f00 and you want to just do this value what you want to do is click paint, paint, 
and set vertex colors that's it we, we've done the vertex paint we've set the colors that's all you need <laughs> for vertex paint um so that that's that so when the mesh moves with the body sliders um and stuff like that it should work like how any hair should work so it should work as it should if that makes sense now let's do data transfer and weight paints so weight paints and data transfer is basically um two other essential things you need to make this work in game weight paints is kind of like when the sim moves so let's say if the rig um If this, if the rig moved, like, um, if the neck moved like this, you know, how would the hair move? And what parts of the hair would move? So, you know, if, if this was weighted right, then the head should move, then the hair should be moving, like, down here. It should be, like, you know, tilting with the head. If you're, yeah. If your hair is not weighted right, it's not going to do that and we need that for it to look nice. So to do weight paints, I believe we need a mesh. I'm actually not sure if I have a mesh, so I'm going to quickly um, export a mesh from Sims 4 Studio. So yeah, how to, you know, how to get a mesh is that you export it from Sims 4 Studio and import it into Blender. So similar to what we did earlier. Um, and if you have a hair that you, let's say a hair from Sims 4 Studio that you um, exported, you can use that same hair for data transfer and for weight um, weight paints. So don't delete that mesh, just keep it with you as a reference. So I'm going to quickly like pause this and check whether I save the reference because I actually forgot. Okay guys, it turns out that I haven't exported an EA mesh, so I'm going to just film this. <laughs> so maybe people who are confused want to just follow me. So I'm just going to like just pick any like hair that's um, not like... Okay, yeah, longer than, like, similar length or longer than my hair. The rule for weight paints and data transfer is to always, always, always select a hair that is either longer or the same length. Because if it's shorter, it's not going to weight right because shorter hair has different weights, obviously, <laughs> to hair that is longer. So th that should be... Um, that should be kind of obvious but for people who do not know or are confused or anything then that's just your sign to never ever do um just just never ever make the hair shorter than it is like export hair that's shorter than your hair that, the hair that you created because that it'll probably cause problems and um yeah i'm gonna uh ref2 i'm gonna name it ref2 because it's my second reference and i'm gonna get confused between the references so um yeah <laughs> then i'm gonna zoom in just, i just like looking at the hair it's really pretty <laughs> i'm gonna export it though export it boom hurry up please my computer is so old my gosh okay i'm gonna do this as ref2 <clears throat> and while this is exporting let me just delete this bezier circle Um, 
please hurry up sims 4 studio again depending on your computer specs um it can be really either really fast or like incredibly slow mine's kind of like in between that depending on the size but this computer for some reason generally just takes long to load stuff and it's kind of annoying oh it's done now because it stopped okay now we're gonna append object and select all of it so we can sort out to see which one um we're gonna make mesh my mesh invisible so we're gonna sort out which okay that was easy <laughs> i was just gonna say we're gonna sort out which one has the full mesh here maybe do you think i could have gotten a better one again i don't have many packs so um i don't have many like um expansion game or stuff packs i have no kits either so i recommend again if you have a lot of expansion packs a lot of whatever packs you know get the hair that's the most suitable because it will make your life easier but this should do what we're gonna do is we are going to go to oh wait before we go to weight paints here's a really cool tip depending on your spec your computer specs you can actually do this thing where you subdivide subdivide is just making a mesh like it makes it more high poly by adding more vertices and it makes it more detailed so you can actually subdivide the reference mesh so i'm gonna name this ref you can subdivide um the reference mesh to make it um, to make the weight, like the transfer, way easier and to make it more smoother. And smoothness is key because the more smoother the weight transfer, the weight, the weight paints and the data transfer is, then the more smoother the mesh will move in game. And you know, smoothness is what we want. So I'm gonna just subdivide once. Um, as you can see, my computer's fine, so maybe I can do it another time. I'm going to stop here because my computer's getting laggy, as you can see from that sudden lag spike. So I'm going to stop here. To do weight paints, I'm going to click my reference. So click it. Oh, what did I do? No, I clicked it too many times. Okay, click it and then shift, click my mesh. Go to weight paint scroll down and transfer weights but we're not done yet go to scroll down here go to by name and it should automatically do all layers but if it hasn't click all layers click clean scroll up click all groups and we're done yeah we should be done so let's hide the reference and let's see the weight paints. So as you see, they are pretty smooth, except from this bit. I'm going to get rid of that. I'll show you how to also get rid of it. But um, yeah, you can also um, just check and see how um, the weights are. If you go to the data tab, go to vertex groups and you can look at all the different vertex groups so vertex groups are basically like the different parts of the sim and they're like labeled in different ways like these are the eyes cheekbones you know neck these are called like clavicles i think and shoulders stuff like that you know and it helps the game to identify which part is which so in weight paints and all that stuff it knows which part is moving and then which part of the hair to move with the body so i'm going to check um spine okay eye area i'm gonna get rid of this um yeah you can kind of also just get rid of weights that are necessary so in this hair in the reference this hair has a lot of weight like small weights 
in the eye area so basically in game when the eyebrow when the eyebrow of the sim moves this fringe slightly moves which i guess is realistic because obviously like if you move your, your eyebrows if you have hair in front of that it may move a little bit but i don't really like the look of that it looks kind of weird on my mesh well on the meshes i've had before that have it like very slightly so i think i'm just gonna get rid of it but again it really depends to like it really depend pen i can't speak sorry it really depends on your preference but i just prefer to delete the parts that i find unnecessary how i delete it is that i just press this and it just gets rid of the group um i'm gonna delete this 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 all the brow stuff i'm just deleting eye area delete lowly delete so i'm just left with head and spine i think that's enough i don't think i need anything else to check weights because you always 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 need to check it let's go to modifier just next to the data tab we're going to press add modifier and go to armature i actually i actually can't say that moving on <laughs> we're going to press rig and that's it you don't need to do not apply it don't <laughs> just leave it now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna press r no yeah i'm gonna press r and like right click on don't worry if it turns pink it's fine it just means that the vertex group hasn't been selected so you can press the right mouse to select the different parts of the rig and if your rig isn't working, make sure that the eye is on, the visib the clickability of something, I don't know how to say that, but just make sure it's clickable. <laughs> and then click this, and it should be working. And if you right click, boom. So now we're going to move it and see how these weights react. Okay, interesting. The weights are they're, they're, they're something, you know. It, I don't like how this one, it like here, can you see it here? It breaks a little bit. Mm, it's very crunchy, at least at the bottom. At the top, it's cool, nothing needs to be done. Okay, checking the spine. Does it, does the hair move? Yep, okay, the hair moves with the head, good. Okay, so all we need, what, this is optional, depending on how your mesh has been weighted, but I need to fix this, because it's really crunchy, and I don't like how it has like random bits of the tips. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put weight down to zero, which makes it blue. Blue weights means that it's not moving whatsoever. So when like the neck moves, this part goes like all crunchy and stuff, but this part doesn't move because it's blue and it's not moving. I can also link a weight paint to like tutorial and a um, like an in-depth one and an explanation so you guys can get it better. But yeah, I'm gonna fix this. How I'm going to fix this, I'm going to press curve, I'm going to press this, this little button here, because this makes it all straight, and like the little curve straight, and I'm going to press weight gradient, and this basically just, this is an easy way to make your own custom weights, and just override the weights that Blender has given um, in the weight paint weight no, weight paint you've done so i'm just gonna press weight gradient i'm just gonna like move it all the way here yeah just keep moving it until you get all all blue and i'm just quickly just check how it was before so it had slight orange at the bottom okay so because it had slight orange at the bottom, the weight was probably like around here. Okay, so 
yeah blue blue weights are absolute zero this is absolute zero weight red weights are absolute um one so it's like zero and one so zero blue means the wet the the wet <laughs> sorry the mesh doesn't move at all and one fully one red means that the mesh always moves so if this bit was red it would if the head moved it would be guaranteed to move so that's just a little explanation <laughs> for weight paints but what we're gonna do i'm gonna make this slightly red but not too red so i can like um so it was kind of like that um we're just gonna keep doing it until it gets slightly orange no, I'm also going to do it at the back because sometimes the weight paint doesn't reach the back for whatever reason. I don't like how you know, some of it kind of like splits open. Why does it do that? I might fix that off camera. But it depends on your mesh. Your mesh probably won't do this depending on what it looks like. But it's probably a problem with the weights. Okay, now I've done that, I want to make it a little bit more smoother. So I'm going to click here. You can actually click this and choose different options. But I only ever use draw and blur. Then for blur, I just like oh yeah strength put the strength at one i'm gonna now blend it i'm gonna make oh no don't change the weight radius which is the circle bigger hopefully this helps Didn't really. So this way it's just a little bit a little bit crunchy. Uh I just like calling weights that aren't perfect crunchy. There's some I, I like I like that. It's quite accurate. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie. This is kind of crunchy. Maybe I can make this a bit more redder. Would that work? Hmm. Interesting. Again, the weights, the crunchy weight could also be a result of this. So I'm also going to fix this. I'm going to do weight gradient and, oh, actually, before I do a weight gradient, I want to make this blank. I always like making it blank before I redo the weights. Just so that it's easier. I just want to take a quick mental image of what it looks like. It has blue at the ends, red. So that I know, like, you know, what to actually do. But I'm just going to weight gradient all the way down. Like that. Another weight gradient. Another one another one <laughs> more okay let's check even though it's still crunchy it looks way better so i'm guessing the weights of these you know there's still work to be done but overall 
hey, you know, it, it it's okay. Yes, I love it. Okay, I think I fixed the weights. So we've done the weight paint and the vertex paint. Last thing, I believe, is the data transfer. Data transfer is basically for the UV1. So I have mentioned before about the UV1, but that's also how the mesh kind of... Um, I think UV1 is with the body sliders. So it's like if you drag the, the cheeks like this... Oh, I can't even do it. What the heck? Okay. I'm giving up about that. But if I like moved the, the cheeks of the mesh, like is it going to move with it? stuff like that so easy way to do data transfer i am just going to click on my reference shift click and click on my mesh so this is exactly like um uh i believe weight paint yeah we're gonna go to modifiers add modifier and where is it um oh it's right there oh my gosh data transfer I'm gonna scroll down I'm gonna go to source object reference or whatever you named your reference mesh oh 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 my gosh one thing make sure the reference mesh is selected i'm so sorry make sure it's selected because if it isn't, it won't happen. And I've done this so many times. I made this silly mistake where I've not transferred the weights, sorry, the UV1 correctly because I've forgotten to literally just make it seen. So please don't make the same mistake that I do, please. Then scroll down, click face corner data, click here. And click nearest face interpolate interpolated Inter interpolated yeah then we're gonna click uvs depending again on your like cpu and how good your computer is this may take a while right now my computer's acting up it's deciding to um uh deciding to try and quit the application okay never mind that was simple then we're gonna click um, <laughs> all layers here click uv1 again depending on your cpu this may be extremely fast or extremely slow lastly do by name uv1 again <laughs> this is actually not taking that long like before i've had hairs that took ages to do data transfer so again it depends on like how new your computer is how good the performance is my performance is okay it's literally a 12 year old computer i don't know how good the performance is going to be also you may get this and yeah it's, it's saying that because of the um how high like poly my mesh is because my mesh is like quite high poly um the computation might be slow so basically doing data transfer might might be slow because of how high poly is which is more reason to try and have a low poly mesh this is more of a reason because then you will get lower waiting times for literally anything even importing into studio <laughs> you'll get lower waiting times anyway once you're done with this uh, make sure these two this should automatically tick make sure you've definitely ticked this one it should be blue make sure uvs is definitely blue definitely both uv1 definitely nearest face interpolated in interpolated interpolated hit apply let's wait <laughs> don't mind this it's fine <laughs> now you can hide to the reference go to my mesh or whatever you named your mesh go to um data go to uv1 
you can put texture um so you can see uv0 and then uv1 which is actually monstrous um so i don't know the uv1 it, it depends like um what what hair you're transferring from but it may look different but the common ways uv1 looks like is just this big mess here where it's like halfway off the screen don't panic it's supposed to be halfway off the screen and if you actually select it you can see that it's actually half and half so this whole part half is in the left section and the other part is in the right section so it's it's done what it should have done so i should be happy you can actually move the uv1 around a little bit um you can i can actually move this if i want it but i'm just gonna leave it as it is um but there are uv1 tutorials where it suggests that you can actually move stuff around to make the uv1 better but i'm not gonna move anything at the moment i'm just gonna leave it as it is don't worry if your mesh looks like your uv1 looks janky or whatever that's how it's supposed to be it's supposed to be messy and weird as long as it, ha it has something like this um there's also other things i've gotten where um sometimes it just looks like uh a project from view and if you don't know what a project from view is is that it just literally makes the uv look like your mesh so if the uv1 just looks like your mesh but made into like uv form if that makes sense then that's also fine because i've also gotten gotten that and that mesh worked so you know just disclaimer but if you're absolutely confused about what i'm talking about i will link a uv1 tutorial i'll, I'll link a tutorial for every single step of the process i've made i've done so that if you like um if you didn't grasp a certain thing well you can always just go to the tutorials to see it explained more in depth but i'm hoping that this will because i have a video like helping you hopefully this will also help we are actually like for now basically finished at this point you probably would be making hat chops and stuff but i'm not making those because my hair does not require hat chops because it's um an updo so i'm gonna link a hat chop tutorial so that you guys can like know how to do hat chops but it's fairly simple i believe you used bisect and just split it like kind of just splits your hair diagonally or straight and it just does the job for you basically um i'll link a, t a tutorial below so that you know how it works but yeah basically done a final step is that we are going to go we are going to like to enable this to be imported into sims 4 studio like if you don't do this step like this next step it won't import i've like i used to get stuck in so many tutorials because i missed the part where they said do this do the geoms so if i had like every mesh in the game has this thing called a geom so i want to go to the scene tab and scroll down and you should have sims 4 studio ks tools um in blender like usually this hap this um extension is automatically um installed with blend with the version of blender you're using um when you get sims 4 studio so if it's not there that means you should probably reinstall sims 4 studio or something like that yeah all you have to do geom and sims 4 hair has like different cuts that it uses so each hair has about three cuts so i've, I've had to like record this part a few times let me try and get this right <laughs> the first the however millionth time i've tried but yeah geom you have to go into sims 4 ks tools press geom um 
the cut the, there's a certain pattern for every hair that it like goes like so i'm just gonna do it so for the first one it's zero 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 two the cut numbers are also like the order in which something appears so the first order zero 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 one wait zero 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 two is the hair without any cuts and then you what we have to do is click the mesh or whatever your thing's called Control c Control v oh wait no edit mode object mode sorry Control c Control v delete bone bone shape delete oh yeah delete rig one you can also delete the reference you don't need that anymore make sure it's not there when you're importing stuff click on this go here zero 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 just need zero 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 <laughs> do it again so control c control v zero 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 one and boom that's your geoms done so this is like once you do this you can actually save it 13 save it and you can actually import it into Simple studio so i am going to do that but before i do that i want to make this lower poly because the individual one mesh that's 56 polys and that's not really acceptable for a hair mesh at least for a hair mesh that you want it to be efficient so i'm gonna decimate this hair mesh and what you do with decimating is that you basically go to the modifiers you add a modifier called decimate which is generate decimate and what you can use as you can actually lower the poly count by it eliminates different like just random vertices to make it lower poly but make sure not to go too low it looks like this it looks awful it looks like someone just chewed up your mesh make sure you do not put it this low <laughs> okay please don't so i'm gonna put it back up to the top very very top okay so you want to decimate it enough so that it looks still looks good but you know it's still an acceptable poly count so i'm gonna just go a bit low i'm gonna keep going low oh no i kind of skipped a little bit no <laughs> let's try that again um decimating um sorry i'm 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 just kind of fixing the mesh here but decimating is also extremely important for level of details so that's lod if you've noticed in the sims 4 studio if i can show you if you go into like whatever package there is there's the lod so there's lod 0 lod 1 lod 2 lod 3 if you notice the sim looks um very decimated here so led is actually level of detail and it's like when you zoom out in the game like this this is this is what led look free looks like it's what the hair looks like or the mesh looks like when you zoom out or zoom in so lod zero is the one they show in create a sim because it's the highest poly and it's the most defined LOD one is the one they show in game and like in game if you have a um your settings on low this is what they show when your hair is a when you're about this far roughly and LOD three is when they show when you're like over here like really zoomed out like really really zoomed out so make sure that you have your lods your LODs because if you don't it may make some people's computers slow depending on whether you're going to release this I mean even if you're 
do, doing this for personal use, I still recommend doing LOD because it will save your computer a lot of energy. So just do, do your LODs by you decimate the mesh. So you like would do it a little bit, apply it, save it as LOD1, LOD2, LOD3 and ex import the mesh like if you named it LOD1 import the LOD1 mesh here and do same for all of them and then once you do that you can save and you're good to go so because I need to um, fix my mesh a little bit I'm gonna show categories so because this is hair we don't need to change this but you can do you can set up your age and gender flags for the sims so like you know who can wear it can children wear it can toddlers wear it can adults teens elders young adult, adults you can also set it set it for whether you know male sims female sims can wear it colors i don't really touch that for hair age appropriate i leave that leave leave um depending on what hair it is you might you what you might want to change the different <laughs> settings but i'm gonna just leave this um i don't really know what archetype is but there's probably not an african this is not anything okay this is why i changed so this is medium updo and you always apply it to all swatches making it it makes it so much easier for you long no medium yeah medium Hair colour, just leave that. Hair texture, straight. And you can you can also do part flags. I personally disallow for random for for, for for random for random, but I don't restrict the opposite frame. So any sim with any frame can wear it my the hairs. Cause why not? Go for it. So Again, it's just up to you, whatever you take, but just make sure it's, this is like, whatever your hairstyle is. <laughs> uh, don't just copy me, just do whatever the hairstyle you're making is. And I want to save. So, this is just for when I import my hair into um, SimSource Studio. So... Just remember to do, to do your lots. I'm going to sort out my mesh and I will kind of clip to a different part when I've sorted everything out.
everyone, a bonus tip that I forgot to mention is that to make your life way easier and to avoid importing a trillion swatches, what you can actually do is you can press Control shift c yes, the exact same um, <laughs> cheat code for The Sims, where I'm, literally most Sims games have had con- Control shift c but yeah, go into the mesh you're using to for texture for whatever. Con- press Control Shift C, and make sure this is Sims Four Studio, by the way. So Control Shift C, type in Studio dot export all, and this basically just exports all of the. All of the textures, so you don't have to import them yourself. It exports all of the, like the shadow maps, the normal maps, all of that stuff, specular, and yeah, yeah. Th- these I don't know if I should explain these, but the normal, like the 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 fuse map is just this. It's what you see. The shadow map is whether it casts a shadow underneath, like, let's say if the hair is, if the hair's like this, but it has a swoopy, like, thing over it, over it, then if it has a shadow, it should cast a little shadow here to show in, like, an illusion of, like, volume and stuff and, like, how big the hair is. Specular is whether you're the your mesh is sparkly whether it not sparkly but whether it shines whether it shimmers the normal map is for detail so if you're on ultra settings the game uses the normal map to give the mesh even more details and emission map is for glowing stuff that wants to like if you want a mesh to glow but we're not focusing on that because i'm not making anything that's glowing so the main things you would focus on in the Sims 4 Studio is this four, these four. You can't see the the fuse and the shadow, but it yeah okay, it's this the fuse shadow. But it's exported now. So what you can do is that you can to re-import it when you're ready. You do Control Shift C, Studio dot import or so it's like literally the same thing but import not export and you hit okay but i'm not ready yet so i'm not using that yet but also just to show you because it's useful make sure if you want to import stuff back into blender you can delete these files and import it with your um, level of details or whatever other swatches that you want to add and it automatically does it um you can you you have to but just make sure that if you're going to replace anything in here with like if you're just going to replace anything make sure that you name it exactly how it was because if you don't it won't import it just make make sure that if you're going to make LODs, name it LOD with capital letters, space, zero, and etc. of the rest. If you're going to make a new normal, make sure you copy and paste the file name. And this goes for any, like, if this goes for the thumbnail, anything like that. That's a cool tip that I thought you should know to make your life easier. <laughs> but overall, I think I'm done. I'm going to say bye for now. If I have any more additional things i want to add i'll probably just talk again but for for now i hope this tutorial has helped you um it's probably going to be kind of long because i'm looking at my voice um my voice recordings and it's like an hour and a bit thank you so much for watching um again i don't know whether this is the end for now but um i'm basically kind of done with explaining and i'm just going to show you but if i have anything else to add i'll just add it i want to make a quick interval um to talk about ks tools um right now i'm editing the video um 
and I thought that I would mention Chaos Tools because I mentioned it in the um, the list of things you need and it's an optional thing but it's really useful if you don't want to go into the game yet and want to check the package because sometimes um, before I, well before I knew that Chaos Tools existed I used to go into Chaos and check the package every single time but like every little thing and that really annoyed me so when I figured out that when I found out more like that Chaos Tools existed it made my life so much more easier so to access your file to check it you want to go to clone package editor and you want to go select package so click, click select and I imported my files into ref2 which was that the black straight hair that you saw so um, that's just me I, I like importing it into my references but it, it depends I don't know I, I just do that <laughs> then you press open um, then you wait Chaos Tools doesn't take that long for me um, so I'm happy about that it doesn't take that a, a, a while to do to load um, and then you get all of this um, Chaos Tools is like really useful if you want to like um, also like change how your mesh appears so you know how like if you go to hairs and like some hairs at the, at the top, some hairs at the bottom, like if you do ordering KAS you can change what at like where your hair appears in KAS and it's really useful um, so yeah it's really cool for that but the main thing we're going to focus about is actually viewing what our mesh looks like so to do that we're going to go up here go to previewer and click that and then I'm gonna just move this window here and we can use these all these two tools to like zoom in rotate move so I'm gonna zoom up move and as we can see as you can see we can see the mesh and it actually looks kind of good like I'm I'm pretty happy with it obviously I have to make a few adjustments such as changing the shadow map because this is not the correct shadow map this is not what it should look like um, again this is the old hairs shadow map so it's not correct so it looks really weird uh, I might need to change the bump map which is the what makes the hair more detailed if you're in ultra mode but I don't know yet I, I might do that later I'm not sure the hair looks kind of shiny slightly I don't know if it's just me it kind of shines a bit or is that just chaos tools I can't tell so I might need to redo the spec map um, I don't think I'm gonna show spec map tutorial in this um, because there's other creators who go into depth about spec map and I I'm not that skilled on it yet I don't know it like at the back of my palm right now so um, it's probably not uh, I'm probably not gonna do it because <laughs> there's other creators that know way more than me so I'll link spec map tutorials a spec map tutorial that I use when I whenever I get confused and there's also a nice bump map slash normal tutorial that I use that's really good um, bump map is also known as a normal so just so you guys don't get confused if you didn't know that um, I'm, I'm also gonna like check the male model because I like checking it on both frames and there are a few oh that zoomed in a bit there are a few issues here I don't like that but it's not too bad and overall it's 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 a hair that works on both frames so I'm happy about that uh, good uh, you can also do this thing it's really really useful but you can um, check what your hair looks like if you make certain parts of the body like thicker or thin it's really useful if you want to test how your hair would react in KAS um, and oh good so as I had as I made the hair thicker the because I did the UV1 correctly, do you see how it just moved out a bit? That's how it should be like. Um, and they have one for like most parts of the body, so it's really useful also if you're making like 
other meshes like accessories or hair i mean well we're doing hair but accessories hair clothing literally anything because you can check what parts are affected and also you can also do this on the male model you can check all these stuff as well all this stuff as well you can also check head wide so you can see what happens if the head goes wide it's really useful to see any problems okay the mesh goes a bit weird here goes a bit crunchy yeah I might need to fix that in a minute that should not go all wrinkly that's sometimes due to to the UV one <laughs> it goes all wrinkly like this and it looks really uh, kind of bad so I might have to I might either have to change my UV one or um, get rid of it I could it depends but anyway um, yeah you can just check how it looks like on like different head shapes so it's really really useful um, why is it going in like that <laughs> okay interesting yeah I don't like how it does that I might need to like yeah, and I'll do, I need to fix it. So yeah, Chaos Tools is good for when I need to check if I need to tweak the hair, because sometimes I do. And obviously the mesh is not perfect, so it's gonna, you know, like, look differently. Um, it, it, may, it may look differently on different head shapes. So, you know, I'm gonna try and fix that. So yeah, I just wanted to show you Chaos Tools. And it has a load of different stuff. Um, you can actually like r add recolors here, but personally, as a personal preference, I prefer to do it in Cinswall Studio. But it's up to you. But I'm gonna end this little segment. I just wanted to show you what Chaos Tools were like, and yeah. So, so everyone, it's Allery. I'm back, and as you can see, I have created the sim to style this. Um, this hair and I really like the sim. Um, the sim is uh, very clearly inspired by um, the models of this person, um, Way Wesley Way. Yeah, Way Wesley Le Way. <laughs> Sorry, Way Wesley Way, who was the original like stylist of this hair um, and the reference, the reference photo that I. Um, put up so yeah I kind of did a sim inspired of that and sim kind of reminds you of like modern Harajuku with all the layering and I'm kind of here for it like maybe I'll do some CC inspired by that by that because I really love that style but off topic that's off topic um <laughs> the hair looks pretty good um there are a few bits I want to clean up um such as the hair strands here because if you like pull the cheeks um, I'm not going to do it because it might ruin my sim and you know how um, sometimes if you like move it and you, you go backwards and it doesn't go back, I'm too scared to do it so <laughs> I haven't saved yet so I'm going to not take that risk but basically it deforms the hair when I like pull the um, when I pull it here so it's not cool but Overall, the hair is quite good. Um, obviously, I'm still a beginner, so it kind of looks a bit like, eh, but you know, I'll get better as time goes on. Um, there's also a problem with this one because it's really cute, but like, um, I need to get rid of the shadow map. But other than that, it's fine, basically. Um, obviously, there are a few problems, but again, I'm still the, I'm still a beginner, so like, you know, I can't really fix them uh, as of now but again I'm still learning and I'm pretty proud of this hair I just have to fix it like the ear keeps poking out can you not I think I can use a small ear preset or something but yeah um, yeah so I think that's 
probably the end of the tutorial um i don't really know what i don't really know what like else to say um but i think i think you'll kind of get it i hope um <laughs> um and yeah like i'm i'm pretty proud of this hair i hope you're proud of your hair um if you have any queries or any uh, concerns, questions, just ask below because I will always be willing to answer and if I haven't explained anything properly I can just explain to you in the comment. So yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm pretty proud. Just have to do some last minute tweaking and then it should be ready to um, available for the public. Um, I also need to do a little photo shoot with this sim to like show the public obviously so that they can download it and see what the product is like but overall not bad um obviously it could be better but maybe i'll remake this hair as i get better but i don't know i, I think it's cool um yeah so yeah i've already said all i need to say uh i think that's it yeah <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this tutorial um i love you guys so much and thank you for the constant support even if i don't upload for like months <laughs> which is bad but you know life happens school happens stuff like that and uh that kind of i guess hinders my ability to make content but i'll try and make content as much as i can um, and make sure I'm not burnt out and stuff, but yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'll, after I fix this, I'll do a little photo shoot. But yeah, I'm gonna go. See ya, bye.